In this video, I will be presenting you some ultra effective notion tips and tricks in order to make you ultra productive. I'm sure that most of these tips you will be hearing for the first time coming up. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Akshay. And if you are interested in more videos related to Notion, productivity, and running efficient online businesses, consider hitting on that subscribe button. Much more awesomeness to come. You may already know that in order to create new Google documents, you can make use of docs.new, sheets.new, slides.new. But do you know that you can just type in notion.new to create a new Notion page? You can consider bookmarking notion.new so that creating a brand new Notion page will be one click away. The second one, easily switch between multiple workspaces. If you have multiple workspaces for your personal needs, business needs, you can make use of Notion's applications for Mac and Windows. And inside its application, you can just hit on Command 1, Command 2, Command 3, or Control 1, Control 2 if you are on Windows to cycle between various workspaces. So if you are a keyboard master like me, who happen to hate to touch my mouse, then you will absolutely love this tip. Speaking about multiple workspaces, if you are interested in creating a linked database to a database in another workspace, then you can do that. For example, if you have a master task list inside of your business workspace, you can link to that database inside of your personal workspace by just pasting in your business workspace database URL and you'll be good to go. Most people don't know that they can create inter workspace database relational links. It will come really handy if you want to display only your personal tasks in your personal workspace by adding a filter. You already know the power of slash comments in Notion. You can insert any new block by making use of slash comments. But if you have an existing block, then you can select your blocks and then just click on command slash in order to change that block to any other block. In order to take this further, you can append any block with slash maybe turn into and turn that block into whatever block that you want. Suppose you are adding internal tags to all your blog posts. Okay, in those cases, it may be hard for you to create tags by making use of your mouse a lot of times. So you can just make use of text property and type in the tags separated by commas and then convert to select or multi-select property for Notion to automatically create tag options from your text. Now I will show you how you can convert all the select options to gray color. Suppose if you have a column with colorful select options, you can create a new column text property and here copy all those select options to the text field and now convert that text field to any of the property types like multi-select or select. Now all of your options will be in gray color. You don't need to change the colors of each of those select properties by making use of this tip. Next one, how to bulk edit multiple database items. Suppose if you have a blog content tracker and if you would like to mark a bunch of blog posts as published, you can select all those blog posts and type in command slash and just change the status as published. Or else you can just right click on your selection and change any property. You may already know about synced block. So whatever changes that you make to the synced block, the changes will be made across all the instances of that synced block. But you may not be making complete use of synced block. So you can make use of synced block as global headers and footers for your website. In case if you're running your website out of notion super.so, or you can have a global synced inbox to handle your global inbox items. Big thanks to Thomas Frank for this tip. And did I remind you to click on that like button? Just click it. You may already know that for every block in Notion, there will be a unique URL. And if you paste this URL anywhere in Notion, you will be presented either to create a synced block or to link to that specific block. So if you have a long dashboard pages like mine, then you can copy a link to a particular block and bookmark it in your browser so that you can head right to that block rather than going to your dashboard and scrolling all the way down. The next one, having databases in columns for extreme productivity. So you already know that you can put blocks in multiple columns, but when it comes to multiple databases, you can't put them side by side, but there's an hack. So all you need to do is create 
two new databases and convert those databases to pages and put those pages side to side and then convert those pages to inline databases. This is really helpful for planning out your week. You can have your task list on one side and on another side you can have your calendar so that you can drag and drop your tasks to the respective days. This is so convenient. You may already know the standard markdown syntaxes for headings, bold, italics. Along with this, you can also make use of closing angle bracket to create a toggle list. You can make use of opening and closing square brackets to create a checklist. You can type in double quotation and press space to automatically insert quote block. Or you can just type in the plus key and Notion will ask you either to create a sub page or a new page in an existing database. So it's no secret that you can create reminders in Notion. But if you're working in a team setup, you can set reminders for your other team members. All you need to do here is just mention your teammates handle in the same line as that of the reminder so that your team member will also be reminded along with you when the time comes up. Template button feature is the most under leveraged feature in Notion. You can have all your blocks loaded inside a button and when you click on that button, it will automatically insert all the blocks that are loaded inside that button. In order to take this further, you can make use of template buttons inside of your database template. I have a database template called new video and inside that template, I have a button called B-rolls. In case if I want to maintain a database of B-rolls for that video, I can just click on this button and all my B-rolls will be loaded. In short, when you make use of template buttons inside of the templates, it's like having templates within the templates that you can load on demand. Now I will be explaining how you can have unlimited number of cover images for your Notion page. You already know that you can resize any image that you upload to Notion. But if you resize and stretch it all the way to the sides, that image will be made as a cover image. You can neatly sectionize your dashboard pages by having this full width images. The next tip allows you to double your Notion icon collection. So Notion comes with a limited set of inbuilt icons. But have you ever wondered whether you can make your Mac or Windows emojis as Notion icons. So you just need to head over to the link section and here just enter in the shortcut for the emojis on your OS. On Mac, it's command control spacebar and here you can insert almost any Mac emoji and the icon will be inserted. Well, their link field supports the emojis. Are icons boring? You can even make GIFs as your page icons, just head over to Jiffy, just search for the GIF, copy the image address and just paste it under Notion icon link and there you have it. As weird as it sounds, you can have emojis inside link fields of icons. The two tips that I mentioned can also be applied to call out icons. Notion is committed to make us emoji addicts. Whenever you are creating content inside of Notion, you can just type in colon followed by the emoji keyword that you are searching for and the relevant emojis will pop right up. No more searching for that exact emoji. Am I the only one who hides the databases inside of the toggle blocks to hide the clutter? Well, if you're doing that, you can change the background color of the toggle blocks so that the same background color will be also applied to the database background. Aesthetics to a whole new level. You already know that you can easily duplicate a block by making use of duplicate functionality in Notion. But you can hold on the Option or Alt key on your keyboard and drag any block, pages, a set of blocks, calendar items to easily duplicate the things. If you're browsing an ultra long Notion document, it may be hard for you to scroll all the way back up. In those cases, you can just click on the current page link inside of Notion breadcrumbs to automatically scroll all the way back up. You don't need to rely on any Chrome extension to incorporate this functionality. If you are not living beneath a rock, you already know that Notion implemented simple tables block feature. So if you are having multiple columns in your table, it may be hard for you to resize each of those columns. In those cases, you can just double click on the table width handles and the table width 
will be automatically resized to fit the header name. This is a teeny tiny hack that will save you a lot of frustration. And hey, 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 if you're liking this video so far, consider hitting on that subscribe button, much more awesomeness to come. I love bullets. I create bullets inside of bullets inside of bullets. Well, if you're making use of sub bullet functionality in Notion, you can just right click on sub bullet and change the bullet style. You can change the list format to disk, circle or square as per your taste. Notion's official web clipper sucks. There is one Chrome extension called Notion Saver, wherein you can create forms to easily do entries to your databases. As you can see, I have multiple forms to quickly add a favorite book or a software that I encounter as a convicted software addict. After creating a form, you can edit the form, enable to clip the page content, and even you can disable certain properties. With this extension, you don't need to again open Notion, browse to that exact dashboard, create a new row and add a database item just to add something to your database. The next one, Notion Markup Manager. If you are managing your personal knowledge inside of Notion, you surely have done a lot of highlights and comments. So in those cases, you can make use of this extension to easily export all your highlights and also view the comments. If you want to extract only the highlights out of your page, there's no easier way to do that without this plugin. Have you ever wondered whether you can present your presentation right inside of Notion? Yes, you can do that. You don't need to make use of PowerPoint, Keynote, or Google Slides. All you need is a tool called Wonder Presentation that turns the subheadings inside of your Notion page as slide title and also the content beneath it as slide content. So you can create multiple columns like you do in Notion and your slide will be created. Am I the only one who had the fact that Notion doesn't come with drawing functionality inside the app? Even if you have an iPad, you can't simply draw on Notion. This service changes everything. Just create an embed block and insert notiondraw.com and there you have it. You have a canvas where you can draw. You have various options like you can undo any part, redo, clear the canvas, you can switch between light and dark modes and also even you can copy the SVG code or download your canvas as an SVG image to future proof your work. If you're the one who do journaling on Notion and hate the fact that the text that you write will be robotic, it's not your handwriting, then you can make use of OCR technology. If you have an iPad, you can just write as if you write on paper and the OCR technology will be converting your handwritten text to digital text. Tailored Notion. This extension allows you to do really good design changes to your Notion experience. Tailored Notion allows you to do really good design tweaks to Notion. It allows you to select any font that you want and also subtle design changes like hiding the help button in Notion, hiding emojis in the sidebar, removing the top and the sidebar and much more. I really liked how it removed the sidebar because I typically use Command P and another app called Command E to browse Notion rather than that of the sidebar. In order to add many more features to Notion, you can make use of Notion Boost. It comes with sticky table of content on the side. It's actually a big feature for me. And you can set full width or small text by default for all the pages. And you can close the annoying slash menu uh, because if you're the one who use slash as a character in your content, you may be annoyed by the fact that every time you type in slash, that slash menu command menu comes up and you can by default align images to left, show line numbers to code blocks in case if you're into coding and many more features. Next one, you can make use of Tamper Monkey. This is not like Notion specific Chrome extension, but it has a lot of Notion specific user scripts that lets you make really good design and uh, functionality additions to your Notion experience. One really good script that I liked is word counter that shows the word count of the current page conveniently in the bottom right part of the screen. The next one is evergreen notes. If you're using Notion as your personal knowledge management solution, then in order to implement some features that are so unique to Obsidian and Rome inside of Notion, you need to make use of this extension. This extension comes with references feature, markups, and also convenient search feature to reference any relevant block inside of your Notion page. 
This will help you to discover the meaningful connections between various pieces of information that you have in your Notion workspace. If there is one thing that I hate about Notion is that Notion search is painfully slow. But there is a fix for this. You can make use of Command A app that is an universal search app that integrates with various solutions like G Suite, Asana, and many other services. And also it has native Notion API integration. By just typing in Command E on your keyboard, you can just type in any keyword and it will search for the Notion pages. Rather than heading over to Notion, typing in Command P, anywhere on your computer, you can just type in Command E and search for any keyword. Unfortunately, this application is only available for Mac users. If you're interested in learning more on how I make use of Notion, refer the videos here. And if you have any more tips and tricks to share with me, let me know in the comment section below. And if you have liked this video, just hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and I'm out.